All right, so those views by some of the residents of Kekamega County takes us now to a conversation on the budget. And today in studio, I have uh, Churchill Ogutu on my father's right from Genghis uh, Capital. Thank you for joining us, as well as um, uh, we have uh, Samuel uh, Nganga from Saiton Investments. He's an analyst at the Saiton Investments. Thank you very much for joining us here on KTN News Desk. I think it will be prudent of me to first begin by what are your expectations of the budget as it's being tabled tomorrow? Uh, thanks for having me mm. this afternoon. In terms of the budget, we expect um, a big jump from last year. The budget last year was around 2.7 billion shillings. We expect this to grow to around 3.07 trillion mm. shillings. Uh, looking at the allocations, we have the national government at around uh, 1.6 uh, billion uh, trillion shillings. We have around 960 uh, billion shillings for the consolidated mm -hmm. uh, fund. We have around 372 uh, billion shillings for the county allocation. Yeah. Then when you put the judiciary and the, um, and the parliament mm -hmm. together, it would come to an allocation of around uh, 60 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, is to look at the flip side of how we intend to finance uh, this budget. We are projecting that the main revenues are likely to grow to around 1.9 trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, we have a budget deficit of around uh, 562 billion mm -hmm. shillings. So it would be interesting to see, uh, or rather to look at the kind of proposal which will be put forward mm -hmm. to see how we mm -hmm. bridge that uh, budget deficit. Mm -hmm. This is a conversation we have been trying to have with professionals with a view of the budget, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the amount of money we are collecting in, in, in terms of revenue. Someone said on this particular set yesterday that they think we are being overambitious mm -hmm. when it comes to the targets we put in revenue collection. What do you think about that? Uh, it's not necessarily true that we are uh, being over ambitious. Mm -hmm. If you look at our budget, uh, the, the revenue collections mm -hmm. target to grow by around 12% to 1.9 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. I think it's achievable. What we need to do is to look at the entire revenue uh, authority framework of collecting taxes. What is it that they can do to ensure that they expand the tax base so as, as many people uh, contribute to the tax bas uh, basket as possible? Mm -hmm. So. It is achievable, and also looking at the, the other side of it in terms of how we, we need to bridge uh, this budget deficit, you need to look at the spending behaviors of, uh, of the government. Debt necessarily is not a bad thing yeah. if you look at it. Mm -hmm. The fact that we are going to borrow to, you know, to fix uh, mm -hmm. the gap is not necessarily a bad yeah. thing, so long as the kind of investments and mm -hmm. projects that we direct this money mm -hmm. to has higher returns than the okay. cost of that debt. Mm -hmm then in that case, I think we are covered. So the devil is in the details. Yeah. What are your expectations? <clears throat> what are you keenly looking at in, in, in this financial year's budget? Uh, well, uh, over and above what my fellow panelists mm -hmm. have said, mm -hmm. uh, my interest will be on the public debt mm -hmm. in the Consolidated Fund Service. Mm -hmm. It's jumped from 692 billion in the current financial year, and now we're talking to about 870 billion. Yeah. Of course, this is due to the split between it is interest uh, interest redemptions mm -hmm. will be around uh, 400 billion mm -hmm. and then 470 billion to the capital principal redemptions. Mm -hmm. And of course, also the split between what is the external obligations and also vis-a-vis -vis the internal obligations. With internal obligations, I don't have much uh, qualms about it, but now my worry is the increase in the external debt obligations from 36% uh, in the current budget of the overall uh, public debt down to 42%. So that's my main worry. Right now, if you look at what the external debt obligations has been pegged upon at 470 billion, it's on a particular exchange rate. But what happens if the exchange rate, the, that is the Kenya shilling against the dollar, now weakens? Now we'll have much more in terms of uh, debts, external debt obligations to make when they come due. Mm. So that is quite my worry. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you remember that consolidated fund service, that is a fast charge item in yeah. the consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. So if revenues is this much, we have first to ensure that the debt obligations have mm -hmm. been sorted out first mm -hmm. before we can now even start thinking about the recurrent expenditure and development expenditure. Mm -hmm. So my main focus tomorrow is how, uh, uh, even from the draft estimates, yeah. is now on the, on, on the public debt. Mm -hmm. On the public debt. Yeah. But we also know that among the campaign promises and uh, what the 
current government seems to be very keen on is a big four agenda, some of the main sectors that they think uh, or they say will fuel this country to the next step as far as growth is concerned. Food security, manufacturing, universal health, as well as affordable housing. I want us to just keenly take a look at some of the budget estimates we've seen, that have the allocations that have been made to to, to these particular sectors. Genghis has done an analysis on how this is going to be done for, for the big four. I mean, just talk to us about what are some of the interesting things you came about as you were doing your research mm. on the big four agenda vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of the allocations that have been made to these sectors. Yeah. First of all, to note is uh, the big four. Where did we come about mm -hmm. with the big four? Okay. You realize that uh, according to the Vision 2030 blueprint, there are a kind of economic pillars mm -hmm. uh, that runs throughout yeah. till 2030. So the first economic pillar, of course, uh, uh, focusing on cohesion within the country after the post-election violence in 2007. And then from the 2012 to 2017 period, now talking about the devolution, and now it ushers in into the third economic pillar, mm -hmm. which is running between 2018 to 2022. So you realize that the big four was actually carved out from this economic pillar, mm -hmm. targeting about increase in employment opportunities among the youth, and also looking at some of the social, social activities, social uh, factors for the, for, the, for the country. So f from that angle, you realize that some of the projects that have been earmarked now it's not starting with the next financial year. It's something that has been in place. It's only that now the much focus will be on them. On, on them. Also, something to note is some of the two sectors in that uh, big four agenda have been devolved. Mm -hmm. Talking about agriculture and talking yeah. about healthcare, yes. those have been in, devolved to the mm -hmm. county government. So there's a bit. The, the conversation right now is how now the national government mm -hmm. will also come in to support the counties to be able to realize these two devolved items. Mm -hmm. Talking about uh, health care, uh, right now the conversation is now how to be able to increase uh, universal insurance mm -hmm. among mm -hmm. the people so mm -hmm. that when they go to, be, to the health care systems, mm -hmm. they're not charged much. Uh, so that's the conversation when mm -hmm. it comes to the health care. Mm -hmm. Looking about the food security, I mean, uh, Agriculture accounts to around 25% of the overall yeah. GDP, but now it's prone to the weather-related risk. Mm -hmm. When there's no rainfall, I mean, like what you saw mm -hmm. the first quarter mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. there's a drought impact, which mm -hmm. also can affect the overall GDP. Mm -hmm. So focus on that point, point is how can we be able ir irrigation, there's some uh, allocations yeah. toward ir irrigations. These uh, programs are not coming in in this the next financial year. They've mm -hmm. been in place mm -hmm. throughout. And also addition to that is now on the cost segment of it. Yeah. Now the subsidy program is coming mm -hmm. into place. So mm -hmm. there's around four billion allocation towards the food mm -hmm. subsidy program. And also some of the manufacturing, you find that uh, the focus right now is on the textiles, uh, agro processing, yes. and uh, a whole host of other mm -hmm. industries mm -hmm. to be able to revamp the mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing sector. So there's been a bit of some allocations towards mm -hmm. it. And okay. also finally, in the housing, um, much focus from this point in view is now how to support the low cost uh, housing yeah. and also the social housing projects. All right. I want us to quickly take a short break, then we get back with this uh, conversation here. The big four agenda and the budget estimates that are expected to be uh, tabled at the National Assembly tomorrow by Cabinet Secretary for Treasury. We are looking at what this would mean for Kenyans in the next financial year as far as this particular allocations are concerned. And of course, issues to do with debt and graft, uh, given that about, uh, from the Auditor General's report, about 600 billion is, is lost to graft from our budget. So I want us to take that a quick break. We'll be back with more here on KTN News Desk. Don't go too far. This is KTN News.